Linda McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. It is me, you guys. I'm doing the whole show. I have a ton of topics, a ton of things I want to touch on and discuss. So thank you very much. Last night uh, on my Juicy Scoop Obsessed Facebook page, someone said, go to Kanye right now. He's live on Instagram. So I did. And I was so bored. I just had to follow up later. But this part was pretty juicy. So basically, what he was doing live was it was the a listening party party for Dawn to Two album, and um, he played Kim's audio from her SNL monologue, where she says, "What's the exact thing she said?" Oh, here it is. I married the best rapper of all time. And he gave me four beautiful children, and he's the richest black man in America. And that's what, and then the crowd cheered. And it, what I saw it looked very much like a, a church ceremony. There was like memorable kind of like monk church music underlaying it, or him coming out to it. I don't know. So that's what happened. Oh, hello! I didn't see you there. But you see me because you're watching this. But have you subscribed? Have you told a friend? Have you liked it? Have you copied the link and texted it to someone you love or you just feel like being a nice person to? Please do that. It keeps us going. So if you like watching Juicy Scoop here on YouTube, subscribe, like, and share. Speaking of churches, Hillsong. How is this church sound familiar? This is the mega rock church. This is where Justin Bieber and all these other like hip Christians went. It grew huge in the last 10 years. There's this hot um, prep pastor that was like always hanging out with Justin Bieber shirtless. He had a wife. Turns out he was cheating on his wife. That was a big deal. So there's several like top pastors in this. It was really big in Australia too. Um, I knew... uh, I worked with a guy that was going there with, um, like, people that worked at E! that were on camera. And so it was, like, this cute group of, like, kind of white, up-and-coming, like, hosty entertainment guys. They all went to it. I thought it was amazing that they kind of parodied it in one of my favorite shows on HBO, Max, which is the other two, which I've told you about, which is basically – a parody of what if just a person like Justin Bieber had two older siblings. I've told you about it. It's such a funny show. They touch on all this stuff. And there was even a moment where you're like, oh my God, this is supposed to be Hillsong. Anyway, Discovery Plus is doing an expose documentary on it. And like all documentaries on churches, guess what? The church doesn't come off great. So the church is very upset about this documentary. They're putting out their own um, articles about how this isn't right. It's not fair. They're upset with the producers. But from what I've seen in the two-minute YouTube trailer, this comes out March 24th, um, like all church documentaries, um, they talk to former members that tell their story and are not in the church anymore and not pleased with the church anymore. That's pretty much the way a church doc goes. <laughs> Unless the church puts out the documentary about themselves, it's not going to be that great. Now, I've talked about this a little bit. As you know, I am getting better. Um, some of you tell me I don't sound better. You said, take a break. You seem kind of tired. I mean, I haven't taken a break. You wanted the show. And I also wanted to show you that just because I said a mediocre joke, I also want to say, the joke that's gone viral before uh, Jesus possibly flicked me or an angel kissed me, depends how you want to look at what happened to me, and I passed out and hit the back of my head, just know that was just one tiny joke that I was saying. Because listen, do you know what I do late at night when I'm born the last two weeks? I go and look at other um, people's YouTube pages that featured my story and the mean ass comments that people wrote about me and how I am not funny. This is why women are not funny. This is why, you know, you don't make fun of God. This is what she deserves. Whoever heard of her, never heard of her. Um, 
God. And oh, what did I see? I saw one the other day. Jimmy Dore had a um, a YouTube page. is very popular. It's got a big following. They talked about it. Um, it wasn't terrible what he said. Certainly wasn't sympathetic at all to what I said. <laughs> he said... I guess he was. He didn't want to say exactly what other people were saying, which caused it, which is controversial, which might have been something with uh, the vaccine. So he didn't want to say anything like that. But so then he took clips of what I've said and said, I mean, this woman says that she thinks that she fainted because her leather jacket was too hot. And then they all go on and joke about how they shouldn't be wearing leather jackets. I'm like, look, I was literally just telling you what I was thinking before I passed out because I was like, why do I feel so hot? Maybe this leather jacket wasn't a good outfit to wear. I've been doing stand-up for a long time. I never like my outfit. I'm never happy with my outfit when someone snaps a picture of me after. I constantly think about the kind of outfit I should wear. It is something a male comedian never has to think about. And so, yeah, right before I passed out, I was like, hmm, feel a little warm. Maybe I shouldn't have worn this leather jacket. And now I sound like an idiot on this stupid YouTube page. Anyway, I've read all the comments. And I have to say, you guys, if we're speaking about church, what's crazy is there. some of these people think I'm part of the Hollywood elite that eats babies and is super liberal. How do they not know that I'm like pretty Catholic and uh, have supported the Catholic Church since the day I was born? went through Catholic school for 12 years, put my kids through Catholic school, like Christian people, like that is, that's why I can speak so freely about Jesus because Jesus is my homie. Is that okay to say? Like he is my friend. So it does still bother me though, you guys, because some of these people are writing me and they're like, doesn't matter that you're Catholic and that you, you know, but you need to hear the word of God. I'm like, I did. I did 12 years of Catholic school. All I did was hear the word of God. I know the stories. That's not good enough. Are you really listening? Are you only praying and asking for things? Are you listening back? <sighs> yeah, I, I am. But you know what? Watching all these church docs may have affected my, <laughs> my, may have affected how I feel about Jesus too. But Jesus still is wonderful. He's still loving. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. That's my message. That's my juicy scoop message. I've been saying do your Christian service for six years. People don't understand that that goes along with juicy scoop. And Jews say do your Christian service to me, to my face after a show, because they get it. It just means do your nice work. Be nice to someone. Invite them to a party. Throw them a bone whatever, do something you didn't really want to do and just chalk it up to like, here's a little point for my Christian service. Hope Jesus sees it when I get to heaven or whoever you believe in the afterlife. Anyway, I just want to tell you that all your comments completely affected me (laughs) and made me feel bad because I'm still that Catholic girl that feels like I, I'm not a good enough Catholic, that the Catholic schools that I've supported don't want to be associated with me. I'm still waiting for my high school to ask me to be um, to speak at a graduation. I don't think that's ever going to happen, um, and certainly not after this last escapade. I don't think – I really think I've – I just – if any Catholic school would like me to speak at their um, graduation or any school at all. I'm I'm down because it's one of those things I want to accomplish in my life. Oh, one other thing I accomplished in my life yesterday is I finally listened to the entire episode of Julia Fox on um, who's what is it? Caller Daddy, Um, and the voice is just as annoying as the three thousand TikToks that followed it, Um, and. Anyway, I listened to the whole thing, and now I really feel like I know who Julia Fox is. And some of you guys might really like her, really admire her. This is what who I think she is. She was an, a little spoiled brat child, but maybe that's because her parents were – they were married, but they never lived together. She was awful. She sneaked out of the house. She started smoking pot with her friend's mom at like 12. She did heroin by the time she graduated from high school. Um she OD'd how many times? Um, what time was? And then she's like, oh, you OD'd. 
Ugh, when have I not OD'd? I mean, I literally have OD'd like four times. I mean, it was just, I guess she's sober now, and I guess that's good, but she just um, ran around, went to nightclubs since she was 14, and I think sometimes when you're a kid like that and a pretty girl making friends, then she... But then she has, like, all these amazing opportunities and at the same time a hustler. So then she says, um, I wanted to be on my own, so I need to get a job. And so I looked in um, Craigslist, and I worked as a dominatrix. So, like, she wasn't going to, like, strangers' houses. She was going to, like, a dominatrix little shop. So people would come in, and then they'd be like, oh, hi, I would like to be uh, spanked by a mean teacher today. And then they'd be like, Julia, you know, there's a guy here. And then she'd get in her teacher outfit or schoolgirl outfit and then be mean to them. And she's like, and sometimes it, it's really hot. Like, you know, it's really, really hot. Like, all of a sudden, I'm like, wow, I didn't think that this would be so sexual for me, but it is. So, listen, I think to be a great sex worker, whether you're a dominatrix, you know, or full-on boning someone, um, you got to act like... You got to act. So all of a sudden, she meets some guys that um, are writing uncut jobs. And then she's the muse for the character. And she gets on the phone with them. And they give her the part. And it was basically based on her. So I don't know if that means she was a great actress or not. But everyone says they really liked her in the movie. So good for her. But she's just kind of one of those people that she's like, and then I left. um, I created a clothing company with my best friend. And then I... Just gave that to my friend because I had to get out of the city. And I moved to Louisiana where my two other best guy friends were in a band. And, like, we just hung out and, like, did drugs until I OD'd for the fourth time. And then my sister was like, you need to go to an AA meeting. And I was just like, fuck this. I'm on my phone. And then just one day it clicked. Yeah. So then she meets a guy that she like knew when he was 14 and she was 17. They fall in love. They have a baby. And then she does a post about him being a deadbeat dad because they broke up. And she's like, yeah. And I felt really bad about that to- that post because I found out later he was paying my rent. And the host of the show, Alex, goes, oh, how did you not know he was paying his rent? I don't know. I just wasn't paying my rent. Like I knew the landlord. I don't they wanted like an actual check and I'm like fuck off I'll Venmo you like who has a checkbook so then she felt bad because the daddy the baby daddy was paying her rent so anyway she managed this to then somehow meet Kanye through a friend and it was just like magnetic like he's beautiful and you're like so she says he gives her advice all the time and (laughs) they um gives advice about business things, and then she's like, yeah. And then, like, people think that, like, he's hooking me up with these great dinners. Like, I hooked up the Madonna dinner. Somehow she meets Madonna, and she's trying to – she just went out for the part as Debbie Mazar in the Madonna uh, bio movie. I mean, I would hope Madonna would give it to her. I mean, whatever. Um, the Okay, so here's the deal. She's a super hustler. She's – probably really manipulative. I mean, she can probably make, listen, you, you got to be a certain kind of girl to act like you're like, oh, I love this. I have never been with a guy as sexy as you. It comes really easy to them. So I think she makes friends really easily. And then she's like, yeah, I mean, I was always hanging around famous people like on the, you know, in New York. And so, yeah, like I could just be very cool in the Kanye crowd, but I also bought an, an ele- like, you know what I'm saying? Do you know what I mean? I know what I mean. So she did. So that's it. So at the end of the thing, she said she wrote it. She's writing a movie that she pretty much sold. She has a series coming out. She's writing a book, um, acting. Uh, of course, she has a podcast. And, um, and then she broke up with him. Now she and Kanye are done. And um, I'm talking about her, so I guess she made it. Uh, I just find it fascinating, these kind of people that are just like, why not me? Why not? Why not me? Why not? And then, like, all of a sudden, she's like, family. And she calls, like, someone her sister. And then Alex is like, oh, I didn't know you had a sister. No, I mean, I just call her my sister. My friends are my family. So uh, good for her. I don't know. Good 
Good for her. I don't think it's the last we've seen of her. I don't know that people are going to be giving her jobs. I think it's good that she can write and create stuff. But um, there you go. I watch. I listen to it. I wanted to kill myself. Okay. Um, this is from Perez Hilton. Rob Kardashian has dismissed his 217 assault lawsuit against Black China. You're probably like, I can't even remember this. I guess he filed a lawsuit saying that she pulled a gun on him. He had witnesses that said that they were going to um, vouch for it, that they saw it. But now that it's been five years later and he decided to it was going to go to trial and he has now asked for it to be dismissed um, because he said whatever happened between us in the past is more important that, you know, for my daughter that we don't have this going on. But it could have been had it gone to trial and he lost, he would have maybe been responsible for her legal fees and all of that stuff. He still might. I think she's still going to ask for her legal fees in defending this lawsuit. Um, but that's done. I think she is still and I might have to follow up on this or maybe, you know, she was suing the Kardashian family um, saying that they were responsible for ending their series Black China and Rob or Rob and China for the set. They were supposed to do a second season and he canceled it and he canceled it saying, well, you know, you guys are so destructive with each other, obviously, based on this lawsuit and you're not together anymore. We're just going to end this and we're not going to honor this second season. And she believes that she has evidence saying that that it was the Kardashians that was like, end this, thus taking away her ability to be on TV. So. I don't know if that's still going on, but the family, you know, is so great about dream and everything. I hope that they can work this all out. Um, oh, the trailer dropped for the Kardashians are back on Hulu. Um, I believe it's going to feature the engagement, of course, of Courtney, probably the wedding. And um, I think people will watch it. There's a lot of drama going on. It's, I mean, this is all good. Oh, Pete and Kim are out going to restaurants still and well Kylie pregnant we're gonna see Kylie giving birth but but I just saw a photo of Pete and Kim leaving a restaurant so I think they're still dating and that's still happening so good for them oh I mentioned yesterday or on Tuesday's show that Brooke who is the daughter of Kim Richards um, from Real House of Beverly Hills she married into this family that owns Fat Burger, and there was a raid on their house, and now they both, Brooke and her husband, have cleaned their social media. They basically said they're missing. I don't think they're missing. I think they're missing from social media, but Brooke is not named in any of this, but this is her husband's family, and it basically, it's the lawsuit is that they were using like funds for their own personal stuff. I, I don't really, I don't know if it's a public com like because it's a public company, something is shady going on and the FBI is looking. It doesn't look good for her um, just because that's her husband. I don't think she's like going to prison, Brooke. But then bravoing together said, oh, I always wondered why Kyle had fat burger at her white parties. So about seven years, seven seasons ago, Kyle had like, Every year, she'd throw a white party in August at her house in Beverly Hills. And towards the end of the night, a fat burger truck would come. Well, that makes sense. If your niece is dating the fat burger guy, I mean, that doesn't make Kyle shady. I mean, she probably knew I better get these burgers free while I can. It may not last forever. We haven't seen fat burger in a few years. So there you go. They are delicious burgers. And, you know, I don't know what this leaves for like people. Like there's one down the street from me and... Um, I hope that it can stay in business. Okay. <laughs> I mentioned that there was a story that came out last week that said that um, if Wendy Williams cannot come back in full capacity in September to do the Wendy show, then it will continue as the Sherry Shepard show, that she has been crowned the guest host to take over. They saw many other guest hosts uh, Michael Rappaport, who is like an Andy Cohen, Watch What Happens Live favorite, um, Leah Remini, and 
couple other people were like in the rotation of hosting it. And so that's what we thought was going to happen. Well, no, now it was announced a couple days ago that, in fact, the Wendy Williams show is ending for now. And Sherry Shepard will take over for the fall of 2022. And, you know, Wendy Williams did a post, which now I believe is an Instagram that she, because there's the Wendy Williams show Instagram, and then now there's this other Wendy Williams, which there's only a few posts. One was her walking on the beach. One was her saying, you know, I have not issued this statement. My manager did about ending the show. The thing is, the way the show works is the production company that has it syndicated, I think, had to let the all the syndicators and all the advertisers know their what they were doing. And I just don't think they could wait again, wait any longer is what I think happened. And so they just had to make the decision. And it's Sherry Shepard. And I think Sherry Shepard's a great person. And I think she's really funny. And I'm glad they I'm glad she has this opportunity. I still hope Wendy can come back. Maybe the production company can do two shows. Maybe they can. I don't know. But it is official. And it's really a bummer because I was on the Wendy show a lot. I have a coffee cup from the Wendy show and a beautiful robe. (laughs) And I hope she is doing fine. And I hope that whatever she does next, she's okay with the fact that this ended. But, um, you know, I understand how hard it must have been for the staff, too, to wonder what's happening each, you know, each day, each week. I mean, it's been a really long time. So there you go. But there was a nice um, post that the main guy that you always see on the floor, he um, he wrote a really nice message about working for Wendy and how wonderful she is and that he's also excited to work for Sherry. So, yeah, these people are – you know, the production company wants to keep the staff and keep the show going. So I think that's the that's what they had to do. I just don't really know that they – I think they're, it was their choice to wait until September, but I just don't think that they could do that in the TV world. I don't know if you guys know this, but yesterday it was 2-22-2022. And so – this article went viral, but there was a little baby named Judah Grace, and it was also born on 222 in the delivery room number two. So I don't know what you guys did at 222 yesterday at 222 or 11, 11, 11 or 10, 10, 10, or I don't know. I was just like, oh, am I supposed to post something about two? Anyway, um, there's got to be other babies that were also born at 222. But I just don't think they had, like, the press of this hospital that, like, jumped on it. I think all the other hospitals are just like, what? We only do this for New Year's. What? We have to now focus on numerology? Like, what the? I don't mean to brag, but my nephew, Matthew Goldstein, Shannon McDonald Goldstein's son, he was born as the first baby in the Coachella Valley he was, it was 12, I think it was 12 something, 12, 14 or something. But I remember being there for the birth and the, and the nurses were like excited because New Year's Eve and they're like, okay, okay. You know, but then there's also that weird thing where like, we kind of wanted him to come out before. Cause then you get a tax write off. If he was born at 1159, they would have gotten a tax write off. <laughs> so then once it was past 12, then I was like, okay, Shannon, get your baby out because you know, this could kind of be fun. And her husband was like, I don't know. I always see those news stories of those families. Do we really want to be that family? But then I remember the nurses called and she's like, I called every hospital. We're the, we're the ones. So congrats. And then they like did a little newspaper article and like wrote about my sister's fertility journey. And, um, but now I feel like now this is going to be the new thing. You know how like we never had gender reveals before. Now, so what's the next number thing? Not I don't even know. It's not even that good. Three twenty three. This is the last like fun one coming up. So when I guess you're right until three thousand and thirty three, 
March 3rd, 3033. I hope that's when you have a baby. I don't know. But it's cute. Happy for everybody. Okay. Speaking of also giving birth, this girl gave birth during her fourth date that with a guy she met on Tinder. So it was an Australian couple, and they'd only met three times in person before experiencing the miracle of birth. So obviously she was very pregnant. She met a guy on Tinder, and they just like hit it off. And um, so she said she originally planned to pick up the guy at 25 at the airport after a work trip, but felt like she was going into labor. And after finding a new ride home, he joined her at the hospital and remained by her side for the rest of the time. So, I mean, a lot of people just say there's like awful people on Tinder. And then here, this guy looks pretty cute, meets a girl that's like nine months pregnant, and is like, yeah, I'm down. I'm down to like be in the delivery room. Like they've never, I don't, I don't think they've had sex, but um, I'm just saying not everybody's an asshole. Speaking of assholes, so d- – <laughs> okay, Real Housewives of New Jersey, you guys. It's on um, – it's pretty entertaining. Dolores, who just gets more g- gorgeous every season, she has gotten a lot of plastic surgery, but like in the best way, like – like just lifted and snatched and like t- like tan and anyway, she was dating this doctor for a long time, and um, Bravo Housewives uh, Instagram says could be rumored, alleged, whatever. Just kind of interesting that Dolores's ex, because now Dolores is with some guy, go- some other guy, but she was with this doctor for a long time. That guy is supposedly dating an ex girlfriend of Teresa's now fiance. But you know what? New Jersey is a small town. It could have been like one date, like Louis went on this girl, went out with this girl once or something, and now she's dating um, Dolores' ex. Anyway, that was pretty juicy. So the whole thing is Teresa's Louis is, I told you how I did the parody of how he went to that like, you know, camp where like men beat up each other and make them become men like some alpha male thing and he did this video and sent it to the girlfriend at the time who then shared it and it got out and it's pretty fun because there's all this social media and viral stuff that's percolating while they're filming so Yes, sometimes a cast member brings up something on camera and they're like, I can't believe you brought that up. But I don't think it's as bad if they bring up something that is really going on in the world. Like they're all getting the DMs. They all follow these people. And if this news comes out that Louis did this video where, you know, he was begging for this woman's forgiveness and to marry her and it was a few years ago, you know what? You're on a TV show and Teresa's like, you know, he didn't sign up for this. I'm the public person. You know, I he didn't sign up. Yeah, you did sign up for it, though. If you're going to marry a public person, whether it's the president of the United States or, you know, the chief of police or a housewife, you, your life is not going to be your own and your privacy is not going to be your own, especially a reality TV show. So um, we see next week that it all comes up and Teresa's very – very um, protective of him. And she's like, you don't need to explain yourself. And But let me tell you, I mean, this this is kind of making the season because it's, it's interesting. We have this whole thing going on. And then we have this other um, cast member who it gets revealed that her perfect marriage to her plastic surgeon has not always been perfect. It's pretty good now. But 10 years prior, when she was pregnant with baby number four out of the five, he had an affair. And... Again, you know, but you would think that that Jennifer would have been like, if I have something to hide or whatever that I don't really want out, if somebody, if if I knew that my husband had an affair and then someone else was talking about an affair they had, I would be like, yeah, but you know what? Things, sometimes things happen. Sometimes that affair is meant to end the marriage and sometimes it's a blip in the road. Like I would have been nice about it, but Jennifer wasn't nice about about affairs with Margaret. So then Margaret brought it up. It's pretty juicy. If you're not watching it, this is what I like about it. It's because what I'm talking about, it just makes you go, 
Mm. We've all been there where not everyone, not everyone's marriage is great. And then your friend who's been married a long time goes through some something really bad. And I've been there and I've been like, okay, first we all talk about how you got to leave him, right? And then pretty soon you realize she's not leaving. They're going to counseling. And at that point then I'm like, okay, good, good. Maybe he hit rock bottom. You know what? This is what you want. You want to stay married. You want to stay in your house. You want to forgive him. I'm here to be there with you. And I will be nice every time I see him and, you know, act like this shit never happened that you all told us about. So it is awkward because, you know, now everybody knows it and then you have to act nice. But then you also have to make a juicy TV show. And so it's getting pretty good. Um, oh, so this was also really ju- juicy because <laughs> I saw the word Louis. Um, at one point before Louis shows up for this weekend at the Shore House, Teresa is talking to him and her mic's on and she goes, and he goes, I, I he says something like, I got to get out of here. I, I don't want to do this filming this weekend. And then she goes, wait a minute. And she is like, I'm mic'd. And he goes, turn it off. So this is what we love in Housewives. So then the producer comes out and is like, Teresa, what's going on? And people think maybe Melissa ran and, and told the producer that she's turned off her mic, or they I guess they would know that her mic's been turned off. And she and Teresa's like, Louis didn't sign up for this. And she goes, Yeah, but it's out here now, the producer. Much like how Spencer tried to get me and Peter to do the same scene that Whitney and her husband did in Salt Lake City, like you know, as we were joking about that on Tuesday's show, but like, she's like, yeah, but it's out here and it's out there now. He should come and defend himself and explain himself rather than just run away. And you kind of feel for Teresa because she does really love this guy and she wants us to work. And she's like, you know, this is her livelihood and this is, she loves the fame and she loves what she's become. But at the same time, she's like, fuck, I don't want I don't want him to run away. I don't want to lose this. And this is annoying. And I want all my friends to have my back. But at the same time, this is what's happening. And we're making a show. So um, I love when we see like a producer, like in her face mask and her shorts and, you know, a pony and just like, and it's going to, it's so anyway, that's going to get good. That was, that was from Bravo Snark side. That's a great Instagram too. Um, Jen Shaw. Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, little update on this. As you know, Jen Shaw is facing an enormous amount of time behind bars. Everyone under her, including her assistant that was featured, has pled. Her trial, I think, starts March 7th. But um, this was pretty interesting. So I live, Live for Bravo reminded me there was a time, according to them, that Jen Shaw was asking for a GoFundMe, begging that if 10,000 kind souls would to give her 250 each, she would have her defense. And then based on when they filmed this is when she was getting ready to move into a smaller house and the the, um, guy doing the moving said that the moving cost would be 10,000. So just kind of interesting. Anyway, um, her legal team, according to Ron, Ron Richards, who is the... Now the, I don't know, corresponding attorney for all things housewives, he said that her legal team has now deposed and asked for all the findings from Stuart, her first assistant's legal team, which you can never do that. That's a client, lawyer-client privilege. They don't have to ever hand that over to anybody. Their only job is to defend that client and to get him the best possible deal. And her attorneys were asking for that information. So we found found that pretty interesting. It's just not looking good for her. It just isn't. Oh, sister wives. As you know, Christine has left and they did a three-part one-on-one of why Christine left. Christine has left the family because she was wife number three. She never had a real marriage, so it makes it real easy. And she said they didn't have, you know, didn't have sex. And then he he was pretty awful in it. 
And meanwhile, Robin cried the whole time. And she's like, you didn't, she just, how could she say that she tried everything when she did it? She didn't even try that hard to save the marriage. I'm like, how do you know? He was boning you every time. He didn't bone her for 12 years. Like, what do you want from this girl? Anyway, she got what she wanted. Her own spinoff show on TLC, Cooking with Christine. I think it's just like on like app or like, I don't know, on the website or something. It's not a full-blown show. But, I mean, she did raise 13 kids at the same time. So I think she probably knows how to make some cinnamon rolls or something. Good for her. I mean, I don't know how great it's going to be, but we're happy for her. Um, meanwhile, Mary's Instagram is all about being the, you know, just so freaking happy since she discovered LuLaRue, <laughs> LuLaRue, which is the famous leggings. And I was see, watching it or seeing some post and she was like, you know, just think. If if you start something now, where you'll be a year from now. But what about if a year from now you look back to this day and said, "Why didn't I start that thing?" You know, f- find a couple people and like get your life going. Anyway, um, and then meanwhile, Janelle, people wondered because we know he doesn't have sex with Mary. She says they haven't held hands. Nothing. Like she's just waiting in her house for COVID to end. And um, meanwhile, we know he's with Robin the whole time. Okay, and because this whole thing was I can't visit the other wives in case they have the Covies and give it to me. Does he have sex with Janelle? People are really want to know. And Janelle just kept saying, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. I think. (laughs) I think that. Um. First, I thought that maybe she was just like really good at giving BJs. I'm just going to be honest. Just like that girl that's just like anytime you come over and then, you know, but then there are times where she's like, oh, I I really miss Cody. It's been six weeks. And then they're like, she's like, we really have a good conversation. Now I'm thinking, no, I think he's only boning Robin. I think he at 50 or whatever, he really only has the energy to bone Robin. I Assume the show will continue. It's been going on for so long. I can't imagine that it would stop. It's not like they have a million other opportunities. I don't think they even get paid that much. So there you go. We'll see what happens. Here it is. Cooking with Christine. She's just making like a pie. Okay. Oh, this was interesting from Summer House, which I'm not really watching, but I know you guys are. Someone posted. Who was it? Amanda. Amanda posted um, Juicy Scooper. That there were – okay, so they had like a like a sexy like dominatrix look outfit. Oh, which by the way, Julia Fox loves dominatrix chic. She just loves it, loves that look. Literally, like I love a pleather pant. I love a pleather pant and like lick my boot kind of a boot. Anyway, um, these um, – the actual cameramen had to also dress up like they were like dominatrix people, these guys. And it's pretty hilarious, like what they're wearing. Um, but I think it's because then if other if other cameras hit them, it just they blend a little bit. But I mean, do you imagine like, oh, and also, can you guys wear these pleather uh, chaps while you stand and film these assholes all night? Like... If you like, you're like, really, this is what I went to, you know, film school for. So God bless those people. Oh, this was very weird. Cover of Vanity Fair, the, what is it? The 28th annual Hollywood issue featuring Nicole Kidman. A lot of people have talked about this cover. Nicole Kidman is very thin and, you know, looks very young for her age, right? But she is 54. She's also, I think, nominated for an Oscar for Lucille Ball, I assume, since this is the Hollywood issue. I don't know. She's also won an Oscar. um, Or maybe she did win one. Anyway, she's been nominated a few times. They put her in this little schoolgirl outfit, like the full stomach exposed, literally an outfit for, you know, Britney Spears 20 years ago. And people are just like, why? 
and why did she agree to it? Or is it just that thing where she's like, you know, it's probably my last year. I can go full, you know, stomach on it. I don't, I don't know. I cannot believe. She, I really can't believe she agreed to it. If so, if they said that to me, I'd be like, no. Like I'm Nicole Kidman. She's gorgeous. If she would have just worn, like, why not just wear like a glamorous Hollywood gown? I I don't know why. I mean, everything she puts on because she's so so tall and thin looks stunning. She could put on any kind of gown and like this is just it's just embarrassing and she's like an obvious wig on and it's just weird okay real housewives of beverly hills the latest with erica so erica um according to reality blurb um i mean this is just all confused i'm just gonna give it to you in a nutshell she Someone's holding the earrings that are worth $1.4 million. She's supposed to give back the earrings. She's also part of some lawsuit. But her defense, again, is what the defense we knew would be. Um, he worked for this law firm. She does not have a law degree. She never was involved in the finances. They even hired outside accounting people, none of which or the names Erica Girardi was ever in charge of having to do this. So... That's basically her defense. But there's a new lawsuit for $2.1 million in that, you know, she's aiding and abetting Tom. Then there's like he has a few um, life insurance policies that are worth like nothing. Like one's like 38000 The other one's like 40000 OK, those are now being put aside for the victims. I I really don't think. Yes, she probably won't get to keep those earrings, but... Besides that, I think she's going to be fine. Like, I don't think that they, I do not think um, that she's going to lose. I don't think she's going to be like paying for the rest of her life or anything. I think they're going to take everything they can. And then she's really going to pretty much just have to make new money. And she's not going anywhere from the housewives. So there you go. Yeah. Oh, here it was. This was exactly what they said, um, according to Ron Richards, which he got the actual legal document. Uh, Their defense for her is, among other things, during the time of the marriage, Tom Girardi worked as an attorney for yeah, Girardi Keys, along with other attorneys and employees. They managed the finances, the law practice, and the business affairs. Uh, Tom Girardi and others there, at times using outside accountants, and they selected... And directed and also managed the marital finances of of them both and the finances of an entity called EJ Global, that which is her her um company. So she's like, I didn't even they the firm and their financial people covered my um Erica Girardi, EJ Global, Erica Jane, you know, um production. At the time, Erica Girardi has been a professional entertainer. Erica Girardi has no law degree and did not participate in management of the financial affairs, law practice, or business affairs, and did not manage the marital finances of her and Tom Girardi. And Erica Girardi deferred to Tom Girardi, given his apparent superior knowledge and expertise, to manage, along with Girardi and Keith's employees and outside accountants, the marital affairs and the finances of EJ Global. I mean, that's true. We always saw that. She'd be like, oh, he looks at every contract I have. I always ask him about things. What I have said from the beginning is, did she ever wonder if there was some shady shit going on? Yes, but I don't think she tried to find out. I think whatever she was able to spend, she did. If he said you have carte blanche, she took it. She didn't think about when the next paycheck was coming or when the not next lawsuit check was coming in or if, in fact, Tom was paying every victim their due. I think she just went along with her life. I don't think she was screwing him. She knew he was cheating on her. And she was like, I'm getting mine. And it's finally my time to shine. I'm having a blast. And now I'm on the show. I'm finally really having the real the original dream I wanted was to be a star. I put that dream aside to just be a rich wife. Well, now I've got it all. I'm a rich, real housewife. And then this comes crashing down. So we'll see what happens. 
So this um, came to my attention. Um, someone sent it to me from the Daily Beast. And they said, why is no one talking about this? And Horatio Sands is a former SNL cast member, but he's continued to work. And his sexual assault accuser has spoken out. And she said, he abused me all over SNL. So what this article does is they basically covered her lawsuit, which is her story. So I'm just going to summarize what her story was. Um, she – this was back right around um, 9-11 time, 2001. And she was a high school student. And she loved SNL. And she actually created like fan – like a fan website thing, and brought it to the attention of her favorite cast members at SNL. And at the time, uh, that was Horatio was one of them, and he shared an office with Jimmy Fallon. And why are you laughing? I thought I was going to sneeze. Oh. <laughs> okay. So Horatio and Jimmy Fallon shared an office together. And Chris Parnell was there, who I actually know from the Groundlings. And – you know, this was t more than 20 years ago or just about 20 years ago. And now all these people can r read comments all night long about how much everyone loved their sketch or how they're their favorite person. But back then, this was really probably really kind of cool for these cast members to have access to fans telling them the characters they loved or whatnot. And she ran it, which a lot of people – I remember that even happening back in my Chelsea Lately days. They, we would have some of these super fans, and there was this one person. Um, I'm not going to say what, but she took her name, and then she put Lately at the end of it. And we all knew who she was. She tweeted us all. You know, um, one time I was doing a show, and she got herself all of a sudden, someone's like, yeah, your friend is here. And I'm like, what? And she goes, it's me, you know, her Twitter name. And she was young. And she came up to the green room of Cobbs in San Francisco. And then we did like a, a baseball game. And she was there. And she was making friends with all these people. And she wasn't in high school, but she was young, like definitely early 20s. And I kind of remember thinking, what's the goal with this girl? Like, it, it, did she, are we supposed to be giving her a job? Should we be? And at one point, people were like, should we be giving her a job? And then I remember like Sarah got close to like another fan and we actually wrote a After Lately episode about it because we thought it was like, what are you doing? Like she bought her a plane ticket. I don't know. Because it, I just get how you could get friendly with these people, even when it's platonic. And and that's kind of where I think where fandom, where they say, oh, I want to run your – your website or let me run your Facebook page. And so she obviously knew how to do it. They didn't. And they thought it was cool. And she thought it was cool. So in it, then she like got to come to a taping. And then according to her, Horatio then started to talk to her all the time. And he also talked to this other girl that like helped, that was like a super fan um, that goes by the name of Melissa in this article. And you know, flirt and say, oh, do you have a boyfriend? And now at this time he's 32 and the girl is 16. And in this in this article, he – eventually she goes to the after parties of SNL and then the after after party where there's drinking and things going on. And in this lawsuit, they mentioned Jimmy Fallon a lot, being that he was present and that she had her own conversations with him. Jimmy Fallon did nothing to her, but he shared an office with Horatio and she tells him a conversation where he – where it was definitely clear that he was aware that she was 16. And the reason I think that the attorneys are mentioning Jimmy Fallon is because Jimmy Fallon is extremely important to NBC who has also been um, mentioned in this lawsuit along with like SNL – I think producers, but also NBC. And, you know, NBC just needs to write this girl a check, okay? Because I, I don't know why they're not, but they're they're not. They're, his his people, Horatio's attorneys are denying this whole thing, but she's got all the AOL messages still saved. Um they talked for many, many years, and then she because she didn't really have the high school life she should have and 
because of the grooming process of him being like, oh, you're 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 cool enough to hang out with us. You're mature and you're so much more mature, which when I dated an older guy, I was 21 and he was probably like 40 something. We only dated for a little bit. But that would that is such a compliment. If you are a young girl that's being dating an older guy or you're looking back at a time when maybe you were underage and and an older guy was pursuing you. That is such the thing they go for where they're like, you're so mature for your age. You're so bright. You're so interesting. I remember the guy I was dating is like, yeah, my friends are like, what do you have to talk to a 21 year old about? And I was, and the guy's like, and I was like, oh my God, she's so smart and da da da. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. Finally, somebody gets me. Like, <laughs> it's all like to stroke your ego. Um, but of course, in this case, this girl was absolutely high school age. Her mother did not know that this flirting and everything was going on. And she was also like, oh, my God, one day I'm meeting all these producers. I'm I'm at these parties. I'm meeting these writers. One day I hope to work on SNL. This is a perfect way for me to get in there. One night, you know, he tries to kiss her. Another night he's like putting her on his lap. And then um, basically he – it went further but she's like, thank God I had nylons on because otherwise maybe, you know, full penetration wouldn't happen. So this thing happened. He, according to her, there's a moment where he's like, look, you know, making out with a teenager is different than having sex with a child. Like, I'm sorry for what I did, but, and he kind of like admits it. So, I mean, but but what I'm saying is why I think they keep mentioning Jimmy Fallon in this thing and why no one will touch the story is because Jimmy Fallon is mentioned. And they're mentioning Jimmy Fallon, the attorneys, I think, because SNL – I mean, because NBC, like I said, the future is with Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon can be the Tonight Show host for another 30 years. He's only like 40-something. So they never want to – get him in trouble. And he does he did nothing wrong except basically they're saying people witnessed someone they knew that was well in their 30s absolutely acting inappropriate with a girl that they knew was underage and did nothing about it. I don't think that necessarily makes Jimmy Fallon a bad person. I think if he saw it now, I think he would speak up, but 20 years ago he didn't. He was probably like, mm, not my business. And we don't know that he didn't speak up. We don't know that he didn't. Are, it, are he and Horatio still best friends? Maybe he did say something, you know. Um, but that is when people say, why is no one talking about the story? That is why nobody else is talking about the story. But when you're me, <laughs> you have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose. I am not getting booked on The Tonight Show. No one's calling me for The Tonight Show. I think Jimmy Fallon's a fine person, but yeah, you know, guys, there's a lot of guys that are looking back on their life that are in their 40s or even younger that realize that they didn't speak up, that they saw someone being sexually harassed, whether it was in a workplace or even at a party at a fraternity, and maybe they go to bed a little haunted and they're like, I should have said something, I should have done something. Girls, too. How many times have you, like, left your girl? Maybe you left your girlfriend at a place or you're like, I should have not let her get in that car. I should have. We all have a different perspective now. Doesn't take away from what happened to this girl. I'm just sort of found the whole article really interesting. So we'll see what happens. Um, it's in the Daily Beast if you want to read more about it. And But like most victims that have been groomed at a young age, she felt she really didn't make the strong connection she should have in high school. When she got into college, like many people that have been gr- groomed or abused, they um, once they do experiment with drugs, they love the escape so much from, you know, finally feeling like normal and relaxed. They oftentimes become addicted, more so than someone who has not been a victim of any kind of assault or child abuse. So she struggled throughout her life. Um, And she still kept in touch with him, which is also another thing people do where they don't really realize what happened. And she didn't really realize until a few years ago, post Me Too, when she started telling a friend and then they lifted the the years of – what do you call it when you can't um it's expired like the amount of time that you can go after someone the the years that you can do it 
like they they said they lifted that law like now she can go after someone even though it's been so many years so once that happened then she did start to pursue this lawsuit so there you go but i don't think horatio has a lot of money so that's why she has to go after the big guns of nbc so we'll see what happens um oh speaking of snl michael chi or che i don't know how you say it i think he's very funny he on his Instagram, he just has like one post, kind of Kanye-ish. And then he said, I'm starting a new podcast with some comedian friends where we talk about nothing but gossip for hours and hours. And that was it, you know. And um, so I wrote, oh, well, then you should come on Juicy Scoop because that's exactly what I've been doing for six and a half years. Listen, I hate shit like this. I get it. I get what you're doing. You're shitting on people that do what I do. That's how I interpreted it. I think you're super funny, and you probably are jealous that um, I could talk about whatever the fuck I want. And I don't. I you, hey, can you talk about the Horatio Sands thing in a in Weekend Update? No, guess what? You fucking can't. Okay, I can though, and I think it's pretty juicy that all these people that were at SNL parties all saw their 32 year old um, fellow comedian with a 16 year old on their lap trying to make out with her while they all like drank and partied and did nothing about it. I can talk about that on my podcast. So good luck to you. Hope you get one too. Um, This is kind of juicy, kind of weird. Two sisters leave people baffled after saying their two sons are brothers, (laughs) cousins and twins. How does that happen? Two identical twin girls married two identical twin boys, and then they got pregnant, and then their boys came out like whatever. Their baby boys came out like within days apart. So they're not real twins, but DNA-wise, because the two sisters have the same DNA, and the two men have the same DNA, their babies, who are actually cousins are actually twins as well because they have the same DNA or the same mix-up of DNA. I mean, how is this not a show? I'm sure TLC has already called them. Um, Speaking of hot love, uh, Elon Musk has a new girlfriend, this girl, actress Natasha Bassett. And um, she's 27, he's 50. I don't know how they met. Do we know how they met? I mean, who is not going to want to date Elon Musk even for a little bit? Um, She's just okay. She seems cute, but who knows? She's no Julia Fox. (laughs) I hope she gets as much out of it. Listen, Natasha Bassett, I think you're gorgeous. Come on, Juicy Scoop, before you go on uh, Call Her Daddy. Talk about your driving around. And where's our? And can you ask your boyfriend where our Tesla truck is? We've been on the wait list for a really long time. Okay. I love this. Tindler Swindler. Um, Alexandra, who is a juicy scooper, took a photo of our boy, Josh Flagg, from Million Dollar Listing. And side by side with Tinder Swindler, they do kind of look alike. And I have not seen the two of them in the same room. So I don't know. I I mean, could Josh Flagg pull off being a heterosexual fake son of a billionaire? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he could. He's that good. Um, our boys already made um, – uh, Tindler Swindler already made 30000 on Cameo. And just like I predicted when I did it with Chris, he – a lot of requests of um, my enemies are after me is what he has to say in the Cameos. But like I said, this joke's going to get old. Are you going to really be ordering it from your, for your friend a year from now? Um, anyway, uh, someone sent me some um, article in a different language. But you can see he already has another girlfriend. So another prediction of mine came true. Yeah, reality blurb. 30,000 in three days on Cameo. Knew it. This other woman, she just lost um, $300,000 because... She was so excited. She met a cute guy who was going to help her invest. (laughs) 
So she, her name's Nikki Hutchinson. She's 24 year old. She's a social media producer who isn't from Tennessee. And she lost all her inheritance money after being scammed by a man she met on the dating app Hinge. And they were texting back and forth. His name is Hao, H-A-O. And he said, you should invest your money in cryptocurrency. And she agreed. And they kept investing. And then she noticed that she couldn't withdraw money from her crypto exchange account. And then um, she was also informed that her account would remain frozen unless she paid her taxes, which was in the range of hundreds of thousands of dollars. So anyway... This is happening a lot. They have found that nearly 56 online romance, there have been over 56,000 different online romance scams, adding up to 547 million in losses reported by the Federal Trade Commission. Um, This is really, so, I mean, listen, you guys. (sighs) Wow. I mean, I don't know how this is still happening. I mean, for how are people still we're joining weird churches, and how are people still giving money to guys they met online? We have done so many stories on it. <laughs> this, this, like this, has got this has to stop, you guys. Come on. Anyway, they he was he she was Chinese but was adopted, and he was from China, so they felt like they had this little king sh- kingship or whatever, and they would joke that they were brother and sister. Anyway, she was really hot for him, and. So, but a big thing is the crypto thing, which a lot of girls don't understand. And so I could imagine how a guy that's like hot is explaining it to you and then you give your money to him. So anyway, there's a new scam. Watch out. Ooh, this is going to be really good. Rachel, Evan Rachel Wood, who had a horrible abusive relationship with Marilyn Manson. Her documentary is coming out March 15th on HBO Max in which she meets a lot of his other victims and they explore why nothing has been done about it now and how hard it was for her to get anyone to listen to her or pay attention to her or her story. I've read bits and pieces. I haven't really covered the Marilyn Manson accusations that much because honestly, it was there were too many moving parts and pieces. So I'm so glad that now there's going to be like a documentary that I can watch and get into. So I don't know what is happening with him. I don't know what's going on with all of his things, but I've heard so many awful stories of just set, like the the sexual abuse and abuse within a relationship, but then also just cruel behavior like online through his fans with fans. So um, I don't know how much of it will be covered, but yeah, Marilyn Manson is not a good guy. Vicky, Gunvalson is going to celebrate her 60th birthday. We're going to Mexico! She's going to Mexico. <laughs> to Andales! And people are like, wait, what is this? I think that, yes, she misses the attention of being on The Housewives. She wants to be with some fun women. She probably had so much fun doing that Chippendales thing. Um, she's a re- – like, it's through some – else I don't I don't know I honestly I think anyone can just go I don't think that she's asking that you pay a fee I think that the company might be giving her some money or at least some free margaritas to bring some people to Andales anyway go to her page if you want to go and you know what let her have some fun I mean Steve Lodge Roger Lodge's brother just really really broke her heart and I've heard her talk about it on like five different interviews and every time she just sticks to her story that they were together, that he was in her sleeping in her bed, that they, you know, were trying to make it work and that she was totally blindsided. But anyway, he's engaged to a 33-year-old now, so that is harsh. Um, the, I am not currently watching 90 Day Fiance because I've told you guys there's too many freaking episodes a week. I can't. But I thought this was really interesting there is a girl named Mahogany Roca, and um, it's on Before the 90 Days. That's a whole nother series. Anyway, a lot of chatter about how they think that her accent is off. Where she says she's from, people from that region say that's not what that accent sounds like. Then other people said, yeah, but remember, she spent a little time in Europe, and that's why. So she's basically doing an Anna Delphi. Mm. 
I don't have time for this. Oh, that awful voice. The ugly voice. And so it's going in and out just like hers did. And, um, Oh, by the way, now I know why Anna and Julia Fox are are best are hanging out. They're the exactly the same type of thirsty fake, trying to be famous, ex- wanting to be around rich people, acting like they know stuff that they don't know. I the two of them should absolutely be best friends. And if I was Julia Fox's um, podcast co host, I would be worried that if the girl doesn't go away to ice, it's going to be her and Anna. So. Hope that you have a contract with Julia. Um, anyway, I thought that was pretty juicy. So I might just be watching it for that, but I wouldn't be able to detect if her accent was wrong. And they said that it was going in and out, that it's Satan American. Is she, in fact, who she says she is, or are they pretending for the producers, or are the producers in on it? I don't know. I don't really care that much. Um, another page six article about the Julia Hart divorce. Julia Hart allegedly had a boob job on Elite World's group company Dime. So supposedly she gets a boob job with and her assistant gets a makeover and all while the cameras are following them for season two of the Netflix doc. And was that, you know, money spent from the company? I I don't I don't know. I mean, probably a boob job. I don't who cares? I don't know. It's all gonna it's all coming out. You guys. All of this is good for the show. I mean, I hope that she settles her thing and continues to do the stuff that she wants to do. But this is pretty juicy. I really want to know the truth. Courtney Cox, um, beautiful girl from Friends, basically said that she um, started to look pretty scary based on her plastic surgery. We all saw it. She made the mistake of what I always said. She got a little filler and then someone kept putting more and more in and she didn't realize it and until someone just said uh you're looking finally she had a friend that was like you gotta stop you're looking so weird and she said she looked much weirder in photos than in real life anyway now she looks better and it's it's going away but it's something you guys have to be careful with i've told you about it because otherwise you could look like this this is darcy what's it Darcy and Stacy is the other twin Stacy. Yeah. I mean, she's looking like those there there are those twins on 90 Day that now they have their own show, good for them, but the plastic surgery and then along with like white blonde hair and then all the filters looking so weird and scary, but they like it. Those t- those people like it. Like the she looks like the cat lady, the famous cat lady. Um and they they can't stop. They don't they're too addicted. So we talked about A&E's adults adopting adults and how I thought I could see why some people might want to do it. Like maybe they're of a certain age and they don't have children or grandchildren and they, you know, really form want to form a family with somebody and what a wonderful thing. So I could see why the show was appealing. But the, the one family that everyone talked about, well, their suspicions were correct. Supposedly... The Daily Beast is reporting that they have pulled the show. It just went off A&E because of the creeper named Danny Huff. This is the guy who was married to his wife and the wife revealed in the show that she was concerned about his fidelity because he cheated on her in the past. And he is pushing to adopt this girl who is on their sh- on the show with them. She comes from another country and she's pregnant and he's telling his friends, this is exciting news. Not only are we going to have a daughter, but we're soon going to be grandparents. Well, this girl who has a car service went off on Twitter um, and starts to write um, all this stuff uh, back in – well, it starts – some of these tweets that she wrote were in June. How she picks up this guy, Danny, and says how creepy he is and how he says he likes to eat P-U-S-S-Y and – And he says he's trying to find a young woman to adopt as his daughter, not a child, not a foster, but a young adult woman. And his wife is not on board with this. And the more he talks and the more 
the more alarms start going off in my head. With every turn, he confirms that he signed a contract to be on a series they're producing on a major network. He's telling her all this in the car. The more he talks about it, the more I can understand why. His wife is not comfortable with him adopting this young woman he found who lives in Greece. The wife's concerned that he's going to be attracted to her. He has a history of befriending young women. And... Um, so this 20-year-old from Greece is six months pregnant with a girl. The trucker explains to me that he's never considered adopting a young man, even though plenty have responded to his daddy adoption ads. She's desperate to come into the country, and he, she, and he has promised her everything from don't worry. Oh, she's promised everything. I don't worry. I eat very little to X-rated stuff. And the man claims he's not attracted to this girl, but keeps saying yet. He admits that I... Um, he admits, I'm right. Oh, wait. So to be clear, okay, since so she goes on, there's so much to it. You can. It's all from Shay Cab Twitter. At one point, his wife calls because that day they were actively trying to get this young woman on a plane as soon as possible, and it won't cost them anything if she's here versus there. Plus, she's close to her due date. Oh, my God. Um, then at one point, he says, I'm not bringing her to to be my sex slave. He volunteers that. So obviously his wife has concerns. He says that to the wife. And he hasn't eased mine, mine once, one bit. He also tells his wife that the girl can work around the house to earn her keep. So he's on the phone convincing his wife of all of this while she's driving, listening to him. He also says he likes how he gets permission from him for everything. And that that was something I found odd. She has to ask permission, the young girl. Um, so then in June, she goes it, on her tweet in June, she says, oh, and you guys will be able to meet this guy on national television later this year from his stories and his lips. So then now we jump to January of this year where this girl now sees this and she goes, oh my God, I told you this summer this about this long interview I had with this Ohio man planning to adopt a pregnant 18 year old from Greece and how he was going to be on a TV show. Here it is, you know, this whole thing. And she said, I wanted to call the FBI or the INS or whoever and say not to let this girl come to America in the next few weeks. She's in danger. I told you how his wife wasn't on board. So she's kind of freaking out. I mean, this is kind of crazy that she comes across the show six months later, takes again to Twitter. So anyway, it goes on. Um, so I guess that they finally saw all of this and it got enough – um, oh my gosh, wait, there's, oh my God, there's so much to it. Then she, oh wait, where was this? Okay. So then she goes, there's some good and bad news. The bad news is the TV show will air soon and the adoption or at least the temp visit went through and, and she's to America. The better news is that even the trucker coworkers wives and his cousin on the road were also concerned. The truckers wives told them no longer, no, I guess they no longer associate with the, with him and, so, I mean, this goes on, and I appreciate this girl for taking to Twitter to make this happen. I guess everything she said, and probably their own concerns and probably concerns from just viewers, but now that there were people surrounding them that also had the same concerns, that is what caused the network to take this down. So we don't know what happened to these people. If there's a finale to it, I don't know if this girl is still with them. I don't know if she went back to Greece. I don't know if A&E is putting her up and her baby. These are the things I really want to know. But um, another reality show that just did not do their homework about creepers. And I don't even know if I ever covered the last 90 Day Fiance guy who actually got like 20 years. He was on 90 Day Fiance. He didn't end up with the girl that was featured. He got another girlfriend and he was kind of cute. He had the really bad tattoos. I covered it a lot when he was on. He just got convicted for hardcore domestic violence, and he's going to be doing real time. Again, I mean, here's the thing, though. You try to put a show together with people that are not professional actors, and it's fun, and they reveal their lives. And what makes their lives interesting is that they're probably a little crazy or they have shady shit going on, whether they're real housewives or 90 Day Fiance, or adults adopting adults. And of course, you're like, these people are creepers. They're amazing. Let's put them on camera. And then, of course, they really are creepers. So maybe, you know, maybe 
without the show, this still would have happened and this girl really would have been their sex slave. And, you know, so maybe by having the show, this girl was actually protected. I don't know. I'd hope that there'd be a little silver lining to it. Well, you guys, thank you. If you want more Juicy Scoop, I even give more of my honest thoughts, even more honest than this, on my Patreon. So you go to heathermcdonald.net, click on Patreon. And of course, I will be go to heathermcdonald.net for tickets to my show at Brea, California. Brea, California Improv. That is the end of March, March 25th, 26th, 27th. Four stand-up shows and a live Juicy Scoop all there. And of course, I'll be back April 9th to my beautiful Tempe audience for the best show ever. Thank you.